Chapter 15 My fingers strained, balled up inside tightly clenched fists. The pain and stress on the joints did nothing to distract from the emotional storm, and the mere notion of trying to execute a reverse pull on Malachi was laughable. All of the swirling rage had left my brain cloudy and slow. The comment from the wet-eyed Nazi about what Peter really wanted had been rattling around, but I was only just now making sense of it. The Nazi fucks had come for Josephine, but the reference librarian was just a means to an end. What Peter really wanted was... What did this Peter fuck really want? Why was Josephine a pawn in whatever game this twat was playing? And why the fuck? How the fuck? Had Malachi joined forces with the Sons of the Golden Future? You have a lot of questions, don't you, baby brother? Malachi asked, his eyes sparkling with something twisted and devious. Yeah, sure. We could fill a podcast and a subsequent Netflix series with all the questions I had. But I didn't feel like telling him that. Nah, I said, just wondering when we're going to get this over with. Malachi spread his arms, ever the motherfucking saint. I stand ready when you are. Ah, fuck it. I threw my arm up to swing the first punch, and immediately pivoted sideways to clock one of the shitheads on my left. I was lucky, and he didn't see it coming. I heard his jaw crack before he crumpled to the ground. That was two. The remaining four Nazis launched themselves in a flurry. One tackled me in the gut as another threw punches at my face. The other two piled on as Malachi stood back and watched. The weight of the last two pushed me to my knees. You know, sometimes, Malachi mused, beginning to pace across the rubble. When people don't want to listen to the good word, we have no choice but to resort to alternative methods. However we choose to communicate, though, God's love remains the same. Tell me now that that is not a gift. God's love smashed a knee into my gut as God's other love rammed a fist in my face. All right, enough of this shit. I grabbed the first wrist I saw and yanked it hard, twisting it until tendons snapped. More fists pummeled as I got a foot under myself, heaving upwards with a bellow. I didn't let go of the Nazi with the twisted wrist, and instead swung him around and used the momentum to knock the other Nazi nutsuckers off my back. Nerves sang out in agony after every hit they landed. Each punch I sent in return came with a wave of emotional hurt that coursed down those persistent, invisible wires. My eyes watered as blades of pain exploded across my body. It was the worst two-for-one special in the history of discount shopping. Fucking emotional bullshit. The only way through this was to thin the herd as quickly as possible. Once the Nazi nitwits were unconscious, there would be no more pain for the pole to latch onto. Malachi's Nazi hit squad were all fighters, driven by a righteous, racist cause, but none were as big or as strong as I was. My grip on the wrist was tight, and the guy yelped as he tried to plant his feet, skidding across debris. When the soles of his boots finally found a grip, he bared his teeth at me, and I felt a furious wave of determination. I saw the balled-up fist of his other arm coming, and immediately caught the punch in my larger hand, absorbing the force of the blow in my considerably larger arm. Fuck! The Nazi squealed, first in surprise and then in pain, as I clenched my hand around his fist and twisted it backward. I yanked the fucker close until he could feel the heat of my breath. Mm. That's my line. I growled before headbutting him. The connection fizzled, and the sympathy pain in my wrist vanished. That was three. There was a distinct series of snicks as the remaining Nazi cunts unsheathed familiar-looking black carbon knife blades. The fuckers were clearly creatures of habit. With half of his disposable Nazi contingent already disposed of, Malachi leaned casually against the bus, clearly unperturbed or even mildly concerned, about the well-being of his charges. Not that I cared either way. I was already halfway home, and if I could focus just a bit more... A bright flame of pain etched across my back as one of the Nazi cum stains made his move, slicing his knife as he ran past me. I snatched at his shirt and belt and used his momentum to spin him through the air. He slammed into the wall, sheetrock caving around him. He immediately pushed himself back to his feet, shaking off the dust. This one was tougher than he looked. Come now, little baby Amy. 
Malachi said from the bus. Is this really necessary? I turned my gaze to Malachi and focused. Why don't you tell me, brother? Tell me, why the bus? Now. Malachi twitched. The reverse pull seemed to affect him, but there was still too much interference. He scoffed, then laughed, wiggling his shoulders as if he had a bad case of the willies. What in God's name was that? Call off your goons and I'll tell you all about it. Two of those goons slammed me from the side and charged me into the wall that had already been weakened by the last Nazi fuck. We smashed right through to the other side and crashed into shelves of books, sending the entire stack teetering backward. I rolled, punched, and kicked. The two goons backed me against the front side of the bus, and we traded blows. As the bus siding dented under fists and faces, something started tickling at the edges of my brain. Something about the bus. I ducked, and a fist smashed into the window glass on the bus door. I grabbed the Nazi's head and slammed it into the side mirror. Glass shredded the fucker's face, and the mirror sheared backward. He collapsed on a pile of books. That was four. Malachi! I roared, yanking open the bus door and climbing inside. The city bus had run through both the outer wall of the library and the first inner wall before grinding to a halt at the stacks of the non-fiction section. Inside the bus, a nagging hunch was confirmed by the emptiness I found. There were no passengers, and definitely no driver, which meant Malachi, or one of the other Nazis, had driven the bus, intentionally ramming it into the library. The question was... From the side entrance of the bus, the one in Josephine's office, that one tough twat with a knife climbed on board. The last of Malachi's disposable henchmen boarded the bus behind me, blocking me in. Glancing out the window, I saw Malachi stepping backward, watching with a grin. I squinted and focused, sending a pulse down the piano wire to my brother. I saw him blink and twitch before the two Nazis on the bus launched themselves at me. It was the bus. The goddamn fucking bus. I dodged the first knife stab while driving my elbow backward into a nose. Grabbing the knife arm, I flung the Nazi into a pole before turning toward the one with the busted nose. That one thrust his knife at me, and I threw my arm to swipe it aside, knocking his hand into another bus pole. He lost his grip, and the knife clattered to the ground. I took a step, kicking the knife down the length of the bus as the first Nazi scrambled to his feet and punched me in the kidney. Pain exploded up my back, another punch to the other kidney, and bolts of lightning cut through my brain fog. Busted Nose saw his opportunity and started pummeling my face. I felt a boot to the back of my knee, and I stumbled forward. Busted Nose kept wailing, and blood splattered on the ground. He grabbed my head, his hands were clammy and hot, and yanked my head down into his knee. Fireworks exploded. The last of the fog evaporated. Blood ran like a river from my nose. More than a few teeth felt a little too loose. But the clarity, beautiful motherfucking clarity, was finally shining through. Fuck trying to bend Malachi with a reverse pull. These two idiots would be way easier. The two Nazi assholes stepped back to study their work. Ah, oh, and here I thought Big Bad Abraham Owens was actually some kind of tough guy. Busted nose sneered. I chuckled spitting blood and what was probably a tooth fragment, if not the whole tooth. The connections to both of the fuckers vibrated loud in my chest, and my chuckle expanded into a full-on belly laugh, mirroring Busted Nose's psychotic amusement. Suddenly, he wasn't amused anymore. Hesitant, still confident, but suddenly less so. I fixed a bulging eye gaze on him and focused. The boss, I growled a bloody spit bubble falling from my mouth. Busted nose hesitated again as the vibration went down the wire in the opposite direction. He swallowed hard and then said in a small voice, It was like a missile, a red deck guided missile. At least, that's what Malachi called it. Bobby! In a flash, I spun on my knees and bounced to my feet, ramming my fist into the other Nazi cunt. Blood exploded around my knuckles, and I had no idea how much of it was mine or the Nazis. I hit him again and felt the piano wire pulse with abject fear before snapping away. That was five. Boys! Malachi commanded. From his perspective outside the bus, Malachi couldn't see exactly what was happening. He was starting to sound more than a little nervous. 
Good. The bus, I said again, turning my focus back to busted nose, sweat pricking across my skull as I strained that invisible muscle. He stumbled backward as the vibrations hit him even stronger this time. He grabbed the pole as he sank to a bench. Oh, we knew it would cause enough damage, and if we didn't get her with the bus, the strike team would finish the job. I stepped right up to busted nose. This was all to kill Josephine Watson. Tears began spilling from his eyes. He knew exactly what I was going to do to him, because that's how the pull worked when reversed. <laughs> she didn't mean anything, man. She was just another dirty nigga. The connective line snapped somewhere between the punch that drove his busted nose into his skull and when I hurled the fuck through the bus window. Glass exploded, and his body hit the ground, tumbling like a rag doll before coming to a stop at Malachi's feet. That was six. No one left but Malachi the Mad.